Okay. Okay, so I'm going to present a paper where we secured uh, trading in dark markets using multi-party computation. So dark in the title stands for dark markets, which I'm going to explain in a minute. And this is a joint work with John Cartlidge and Nigel Smart. So before getting to dark markets, I will first go over how uh, trading is traditionally done in financial markets, also called trading in late markets. So this is Bob, and Bob holds some shares in some corporate. And for some reason, Bob decided to sell a part of his shares. So the traditional way to do this is to go to a stock exchange, place his order, and then the stock exchange needs to find a match for Bob, someone who's willing to buy the share from him. And uh, now, of course, Bob might not necessarily be the only one who is interested in selling shares. So what actually happens is that we have uh, uh, like a, a bunch of sellers and a bunch of buyers and some, uh, some uh, auction process takes place in the stock market so that they can exchange the ownership of the stocks. Uh, one thing to note about this process auction is that everything, uh, everything that takes place here is public. So for someone observing the stock exchange, uh, he can see that Bob placed his order along with the other businessman, how big the orders was, ex uh, were, etc. Hence the name Let's Market. Uh, now consider this. For some reason, Bob decided to sell all his shares, which happened to be huge. So Bob now has a huge amount of shares and he would like to sell them. So he goes back to the stock exchange, but the problem here is that uh, one of the basics of trading is that the, the price is affected by the supply and demand. So uh, when there is an abundance in stock, the price goes, uh, goes down and vice versa. If there is a huge demand for some stock, the price goes up. Uh, we call this the market impact and because of it, uh, Bob might be selling his stock with a lower price just because his intention of selling was made public. And of course, Bob doesn't want that to happen because he wants to get as much money as he can from his stock. So an alternative to Bob is, is to uh, request a private trusted broker to find uh, to match for him his stock. So this private broker will use his network to find a match for Bob. But uh, one issue here is that uh, nothing can stop this private broker from doing something illegal, which we call inside insider trading. So, for instance, uh, this private broker can be matching Bob with this guy who, who were willing to pay less money than uh, 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 less money than the other two. While if he like if he was honest, he should have matched him with this guy who, who, who was willing to pay more money. Uh, we call this front front running. It's illegal, but it, it will be hard to like it's hard to be proven to prove that this guy was acting uh, dishonestly. Now, another alternative to Bob, which is suitable for orders with, with, like, with a huge amount of, uh, of stock, is to go to a dark pool. So uh, dark pools are venues where, where, where orders are uh, automatically matched using uh, electronic trading system. So for someone observing the dark pool, uh, nothing is revealed. So uh, that includes uh, the orders, uh, how, how big the orders were, eventually how much money this, uh, the buyers were willing to put for the orders, and even the order itself. So everything here happens in the dark, hence the name dark market. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, dark markets started to appear like several years ago, but like in the last few years, they, they were getting more and more interest, given the features they provide. Uh, now the issue, uh, the issue here is that the dark pool cannot be run by itself. And like you always need to trust someone here, which is the dark pool operator, which has full access to the dark pool. Uh, so in this paper, what we propose is to decentralize the server doing the computation. By, so instead of having one server doing the dark pool operation, we will have uh, several servers doing it. And they will do computation using EPC. So, we did, so in this paper, we did an EPC proof, proof of concept of that. Uh, uh, taking into account the three main uh, auction algorithms used in the dark market, which I will explain in the next slides. And in this proof of concept, we emphasize that the throughput and the latency because like, th they are the most relevant metrics to, like, to, uh, to evaluate the, per the performance of, like, of our solution. And we consider two settings, which are the two parties with no honest majority and the three parties with honest majority. So within these two settings, uh, the, the auction process is secure, 
even in the, if even in uh, the presence of one malicious server and the only thing that this malicious server can do is to cause the other servers to uh, to, to cause the compute to force the computation to abort okay uh, a previous work related to secure auctions uh, auctions uh, basically focusing one shot double auctions auctions that needs to happen only once basically because uh, run times were slow that's why that's why it was hard to provide like a solution that can be that can be run continuously and in some of these like some of the papers we come across there was like uh, there was some relaxation in security so uh, no, uh, we don't trust the whole computation to be done by some trusted party but we trust but we uh, we trust some third party to do a part of it which is something we want to avoid okay so as i said uh, the compute uh, we will be doing computation using multi party computation and for those who don't know what does uh, multi party computation means Basically, it, it allows a set of parties to compute a function on their inputs without having to reveal these inputs. Uh, so uh, the parties will learn only the output of the function f to be evaluated on the inputs, which is something we want in our case. Uh, one thing to note about MPC is that computation is not done straightforwardly uh, because first we can really do only additions and multiplications. So your function f that you want to evaluate on the inputs, you, you need to express it through additions and multiplications. Uh, for comparisons, which uh, we will be extensively using like in, in the algorithms, we need actually to emulate them. And that means that players will, will need to communicate between them. And it means more computation to do. Uh, we cannot do uh, branching depending on circuit values and we cannot do data independent memory access while doing computation within PC because that's actually leaking information. Uh, so of course uh, ensuring all of that comes with a price and the price is the computation is slow but to make it less slower some MPC frameworks work in the pre-processing model uh, where we basically we have two phases, the online and the offline phase. In the online phase, you compute your, uh, the, the, like your function f that you want to evaluate on the inputs. And in the, on in the offline phase, uh, you, compute, uh, you, you compute data that doesn't depend on the inputs of the players, so that you make the online phase faster. OK, so the first algorithm is the continuous double auction, basically here, uh, we have uh, like the book order which contain. we have two lists, we have a stay list and a buy list. In list, the, like we sort orders with this, so uh, an order here is, so an order is defined by the identity of the one who placed that order, the volume, uh, how much shares this guy, like his, uh, he, he wants to buy or, uh, or, or, or sell, and the price, uh, how much this guy is willing to put to sell that stock or to buy uh, that stock. Uh, and uh, orders here as ordered with respect to the price. So if you're on top of the list, that means you're, if a match happens, you're the first one to be matched. And so we have these two lists and then a new order comes in. So when a new order comes in, we need to do two things. We need to uh, first check if this new order can be matched. So for instance, here we have a buy order. So we need to check if this order can be matched with, some, with orders from the sale list. And after that, we need to put what remains from this order on the buy list. So we need to do here, basically we need to do some comparisons, comparing the prices and comparing the volumes. And then we need to insert this uh, order in this list while keeping it sorted. And as I said, we cannot, so for ins while doing insertion, we need to touch every order because otherwise we will be leaking information. We will be leaking this new order we, uh, we will be given to someone observing the, this, what, like, what, wh where is the place of that order? So to avoid this, we need to touch every order so that we will, uh, we will remain security. So four run times for this first algorithm. Uh, yeah, by, by the way, like, uh, like I just packed, I tried to pack like run times, but in the paper, like we have several tables and the use tables, like you can check them if you, if you want more details. But so for the one I put here, so for the offline phase, uh, the latency of the two-party case is much slower than the latency of the three-party case. Uh, whereas 
for the online phase, the latency of the three-party cases fast, uh, is slower than the latency of the two-party case. Uh, now, uh, now, okay, now we can explain this by the fact that uh, the underlying protocols that we're using are different to ensure security in the two-party case than in the, in the three-party case. And basically, ensuring active security in this setting is harder to ensure it in this setting. That's why we had like bigger run times, much bigger run times here than, than in the three-party case. Whereas for the online phase, we can explain the run times we get by the fact that uh, the time that would take from two parties to communicate is much, it, it's like it's smaller than the time that three party case we need to communicate. And so we computed the throughput and we found that it's bit something between 10 and 50 orders. So we can handle, we can handle in one second something between 10 and 50 orders, which is something low that one, what one would want in a real market. For the second algorithm, which is the periodic auction, so uh, this one is kind of similar to the first one, but with a small difference. So here as well, we have two lists, the sell list and the buy list. Now when another comes in, we don't match it right away. We need to wait for the, uh, the, the period, like the auction period. So, uh, so uh, whenever another comes in, we insert it directly into the list. And then uh, when the auction period passes, we match orders. Yeah, so we just start like compare the first one with the first one, etc. Then, like we we do like we do the checking like in the first algorithm. So for the run, so uh, so remember, yeah, and then the, we, we take the so the price uh, by which orders are cleared is the price that uh, maximizes the orders traded. So we have uh, three steps here. We have the input phase, uh, uh, we have the uh, the matching phase, and then we have the price calculation phase. So for the input phase, uh, we kind of found like the same runtime in, in, the, in the offline, uh, the offline time takes more time for the two party case than the, the three party case. And the other way around for the online, uh, like uh, the online time for the two party case is much faster than the three party case. Uh, the same thing for the second step, which is the bit completion phase. And as for the price calculation, it's like it's so fast. We didn't even benchmark it. So I'm here I'm presenting only the runtimes for the true for for the two steps, two up to the three steps of this algorithm. And for the throughput, we found that it's approximately 20 orders, which is kind of similar to the first algorithm. And we can explain this because they are kind of similar. So the first one you just take an order and match match it right away, then insert, and here we just uh, like we, uh, we, we insert first and then we match. Uh, the third algorithm is much simpler than, than the two first ones, which is the volume matching. So in this one, uh, sellers and buyers, they, like, they don't include the, uh, the price they, they are wishing to, like, to trade with. So here, basically, we just need to match, match volumes. So orders here are... Uh, ordered with respect to like uh, which one came first. And uh, the, clearance, the clearance price is taken from the list market. So yeah, so uh, we won't need to do here any computation related to the price or whatever. So due to its simplicity, uh, we got much better run times for this third algorithm. So uh, note that here like we, for sell and buy lists of si like of size 500, we didn't reach one second for the online phase for both the, the settings. And the online throughput was something between 1,000 and 2,000, which is close to what one would need in a, like in a real market. Okay, so to conclude, like in this paper, we, so we presented a full PC proof of concept of the three common auction types. Uh, if we compare between the two settings we considered, uh, we like so we found that the three-party case uh, is uh, uh, is uh, slower in the online phase, but uh, faster in the offline phase. But one thing to note about that is that one should not worry about the offline phase because because first uh, most markets open only eight hours per day, so the offline phase can be done overnight. And besides, the offline and the online phase can be executed in parallel. So. 
So if you want to worry about something, then it should be the online phase, not the online phase here. And if we compare between the three algorithms, as I said, uh, due to its simplicity, the volume matching, uh, we get better run times for the volume matching than the two other algorithms. And one thing to note is that as now the computation is done by more than one server, we can include the regulator to be part of the computation. And by doing this, we can protect against dishonest market operators. So do, I would be happy to answer your questions if you are.